Hey guys, I'm right behind the camera, just waiting for a few more people to come in and then we can start harvesting all of these Paloros. Thanks for coming in, guys. And of course, if you guys have any questions, just uh, hold up on them until we I finish harvesting and I'll be happy to answer them all for you guys. Hey, Mystic Fox Daz, my day's fine. I'm doing well so far. Just been getting um, back in the groove since spring has started and dragon fruit season is starting to begin. So I wanted to pop in here, harvest these fruits and uh, really get all of this starting. Thanks, how are you doing? Green owl, how can I tell what kind of dragon fruit cutting is mine from a cutting? Is it possible? I'm so sorry. It's almost impossible to identify them as a cutting because there are just so many types of dragon fruits out there. Um, the only way to tell is you have to have um, the person that gave it to you kind of let you know what it is. Uh, other than that, it's hard for me to tell. Okay, guys, I'm just setting up my phone here, getting the live chat up, and then uh, we can start beginning. Um, I'll just answer a few questions while I wait for it with you guys. So you guys have any questions, feel free to ask now. And let me pop in. I got a phone here so I can actually see your guys' questions. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Sorry guys, getting this chat up here so I can uh, see it. Storm Cooper, you're awesome. You're awesome too, thank you. Um, how long from a cutting to fruit? A cutting from, from a cutting to fruit, it takes about only one year. If you start with a rooted cutting, it's even quicker. You might get it within eight to 10 months. Uh, what are the tricks to get them to bloom and fruit? So my trick is when they, well, when dragon fruit season starts, I start to tip all of these dragon fruits and you can find the tipping video in my channel. And I like to use a bloom and bud fertilizer to help kickstart it into the flowering phase. And once I do that, couple of months in, once they feed into the nutrients and season weather's all right, you're going to start seeing flowers. I do that a lot to uh, my stubborn dragon fruits as well. Jax David, what's up Jax David? Sean Ekendu, what's the best way to germinate dragon fruit seeds? The best way to germinate dragon fruit seeds is literally take a um, container with a lid, put soil in there, poke holes in the bottom, germinate, uh, put the seeds in there, top it with soil, add a little bit of water, cap it and just put it somewhere in your house that's warm. I use like to use a heating mat that always kind of helps speeds it up. You can find that in my channel as well. Mom, what's good thing you found your setup is so pretty. Thank you. Eric C, when will you site when will your site be live for cutting? Is it if it's ready, what's the link? So the website is actually ready already. They're just not stocking it yet because I've been letting them grow throughout the winter and leaving a lot of extra cuttings. Uh, once I do a inventory and figure out how much of what I have, I'll put that into the website and you'll see me post it on my Instagram and my Facebook group, uh, letting you guys all know. And if you're signed up to the website and subscribed already, you should get an email of when I have my stocks. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead now and just start harvesting these dragon fruits and uh, whoever comes uh, gets to join us. I did not bring any gloves with me. I wish I did because uh, these can get a little prickly. So what I'm doing right now, guys, is I have this little scrub here. It's just a brush with some bristle. I got this at Daiso for $1.75 and it works so good. It has a curvature, so when you're brushing it, it does the job so well. So right now, you guys, I'm just brushing all of the 
spikes off of the Pelora because Pelora, they just have so many spines on them. And I used to get poked by these a lot and I'm just tired of it now because they hurt and sometimes they dig into your skin and you don't even know that it's in there. So let me just bring you guys closer to let you guys see all of the Pelora with all of its spikes. Here's one. You see all the spikes on there? Let's go ahead and just do it some justice by brushing it off. And these are a little spotted because over the winter time, you know, you guys, it's cold, there's a lot of rain. So the fruits kind of turn that way. Here's another bunch over here. So yeah, I'm just gonna go around right now, guys, and brush all of these Peloras. Here's another big cluster of Pelora here. It's pretty cool. Okay. I'm just gonna put the camera back and uh, then I'll start brushing all of those spines off and harvesting them. And then I also got a Desert King or a few Desert Kings to harvest. So once I harvest them, I'll cut them open, eat them, and let you guys know how they taste when they started ripening through the winter. All right, guys, so let's just start going here. I'll start this side and work my way to the other side. Got a little basket here. And here's the first Pelora harvest. So how I'm able to harvest dragon fruit so early in the season, and it's only 2024, season just began, it's because I kind of cheated, you guys. These Peloras actually bloomed at the end of the season, and there was so many of these flowers. And at the end of the season, I got really busy because I just had another child. He's a boy, his name is Reese. So I wasn't able to pollinate these. Even though I didn't pollinate them, they're so good at pollinating themselves, I was able to get all of these fruits without having to pollinate them. So when I came out here, <laughs> I was just so surprised of how many flowers set and how many Peloras was able to be um, successfully born without me having to do anything. But if I were to do it, I would do something a little different. This is way too many fruits. And as you guys can see, I have a lot of variations of small, medium, and big fruits. I would have just kept maybe two to three per branch. So that way my fruits could be a little bigger. Um, but like I said, I got busy, life happened. So I just let everything go. But I have a lot of fruits, so that's the bonus, but they're just not as big, but it's okay. They're still gonna taste just as good and as sweet. It could be sweeter if you take off some, so that way it can focus all of its energy on the flavor and size. But Pelora is already such a sweet variety that even if you have too many of them, I think it's still gonna be okay because they're just like honey anyways. And I just got poked. <laughs> So you guys, these are kind of like the smaller ones. Smaller size. And I'll show you guys once we get to the bigger ones. These ones over here look pretty decent size as well. And I'm sorry guys, I can't see your questions right now. Um, once I finish harvesting all these Peloras, I'll start answering some more questions. But other than that, I'll just talk as I harvest these and give you guys my thought process as I'm going through them. All right, so we're getting through them. So how's everybody doing? Miss all of you guys. I know every winter time I kind of disappear and go MIA because dragon fruit don't really do much. So I just kind of wait until season starts to pop back up. So you guys will see that happen every season. <laughs> But thank you for continuing to follow me, waiting for me patiently to come back and uh, hang out with you guys and educate you guys more about dragon fruit. This one's a pretty good, decent sized one. Big. Nice and plumped. Okay, we got some of those out. Got another cluster of four here. So if you guys want dragon fruit that grow well during the winter and have fruit <laughs> like basically ready to eat right when dragon fruit season begins, 
I think Ecuador Polar does very well uh, to doing that. Here I'm in Southern California. I live in Anaheim near Disneyland. So it's been about three years since I've had Polora and every year they kind of always finish ripening at the same time, which is around May, April, and sometimes even March. Oh, and this is why you guys gotta be careful. I just got poked by one of the thorns and there's blood already, but let me just wipe that off. Sorry for all the people that, uh, that do, don't do well with blood. I apologize for that. I should have given a warning. <laughs> yeah, guys, so these Peloras got so heavy. There were so many fruits on them. They were getting so heavy. It actually started to topple over my, my trellis. And as you guys can see, I put a plank of wood there to help stabilize it up because without it, the fruits just bring out the whole trellis. It literally tilts right down. <laughs> And it was windy in California one day and I found it on the floor and luckily I lost no fruit. They were all still there. So that was cool. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have harvested them earlier, but they wouldn't have been ready anyways. I'm glad no real damage was done because that would have been a sad, sad day waiting that long for Pelora to ripe. So they take about 90 days typically, but when they go through the winter, it takes a little bit longer. I would say maybe 100, up to 140 days because it's just so cold. They don't ripen quick enough, but it's okay because when they do ripen, you will have dragon fruits to eat basically all, all year round. So I always have winter dragon fruits from Palora and Desert King. Desert King is another one that ripens in the winter as well. And they always kind of start to have flowers during September. And that's kind of like the end tail of the season. Usually around September, October, those are like the last wave of flowers. And the fruits are just gonna sit <laughs> in the winter until they ripen. They stay green for a pretty long time. Okay, this is what we have so far. Still so many to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on harvesting. I love this brush. It makes the job so easy without getting poked. But accidents do happen sometimes when you're reaching in there to cut the fruit and there's a strangle of thorn, it can get you. And then after I cut them, I just wanna make sure you get the bottom too. Those little thorns always hide at the bottom and when you grab them there, they poke and you don't know, you're not ready for them. So they hurt so much more <laughs> when you're not prepared for it. Let's get this nice and big one here. I do have flowers starting already and it's on my sugar dragon. So April 15th was when I noticed the, the flower buds, the flower buttons. Yeah, so sugar dragon has already started to uh, produce its flower buds, which is great because sugar dragon is a great pollinator. And I always use sugar dragon pollen in the beginning of the season to pollinate all of my sterile varieties that can't use its own pollen. So I'm very excited that that happened for me so early this year. And as the dragon fruits mature, they just start to bloom earlier and earlier each season. This is a pretty, it's a pretty nice size one. Not too much freckles on it. It's looking really nice. Check that out. And if you guys don't know how much these cost in the store, they're usually around seven to eight dollars a pound when they are not in season uh, but when there's a lot of them they can still stay pretty high like five six dollars a pound but beautiful beautiful fruits just grow your own because you can save so much money that way and they just taste so much better when you grow them at home because you have to let them fully ripe like here i let these go all the way until i see them that they get super plump nice and round that I see a lot of yellow on it, just, you know, maybe 10% is still green. But once you harvest the fruit, and if you just leave it out, the skin will actually start to turn all yellow. So if you see some of these that have green still, 
just cut them off, leave them um, in your kitchen counter for about two to three days, and you'll start to notice that the skin will eventually all turn yellow. And that's what happens when you get fruits from other countries. They harvest this slightly green because it's just better to ship it that way. They don't spoil, the skin's a little harder so they don't bruise easily. Um, but the trade-off for that is you get a fruit that's not fully ripe, so they're not as sweet as you would like it, but they're still pretty good. So that's why Ecuador Polar has been such a great commercial variety. It's because you can harvest them early and they stay so sweet still. And the skin is also very thick, so shipping them is also very nice because you don't get a lot of bruised or damaged fruits. And in return, the farmers make more money that way. But Vietnam, it's a different story because when they harvest their fruits early, the Vietnam white already don't have too much sugar in them. So when they harvest it early and they get to our states and we eat them, they just suck. <laughs> They're like bland kiwis, as, as everyone says. So, and that's why dragon fruit has such a bad rap. It's because you're getting them not fully fresh from Vietnam. You know, they're, they're kind of harvest early, mostly green. And by the time they get to our country, the skin has already changed the color to all red because once you cut them off, the skin still changes color, but the flavor and sweetness does not uh, ripen anymore. So that's the sad part about dragon fruit. And that's why I'm like, if you haven't had a good dragon fruit yet, grow your own and then you can tell me if it's still bad after you've done that <laughs> and don't worry i have a channel that teaches you how to grow dragon fruit from a to z so there's no excuses right guys you got to just find a starter or beginner dragon fruit like sugar dragon american beauty condor pink panther or what's another one sour patch kids sour patch watermelons those are also very easy to grow and you'll get so much fruit and delicious ones too. They are all self-fertile, self-pollinating. So it gets, it's very easy for you to grow dragon fruit. This one is a little deep in there so, and I can't really get it. So there's still a lot of spikes on there and it got to my finger already. <laughs> but this is also another nice size one. Really, really pretty fruit. And once we have them all harvested and in that basket, they're just gonna look so amazing it's kind of like collecting rare pokemons <laughs> and that's how it feels to me when i grow dragon fruit every new dragon fruit that i get to see it's kind of like a new creature and i'm always so curious of how it tastes and that's why i love dragon fruit they're just not one flavor there can be so many types of terps in dragon fruit. This one is like a honey cluster. Very sweet, no tart at all. So if you're into like very sweet dragon fruit, Pallora is the one for you. And, and if you guys didn't know, the yellow dragon fruit, the Pallora specifically, once you eat like a whole fruit, it kind of makes you go to the restroom. It's like a natural laxative. <laughs> I've eaten the whole fruit and then within like 30 minutes to an hour, it just clears your GI tracts out, guys. So if you guys ever are constipated or have trouble going to the restroom, eat a big Pallora and the whole fruit and within one hour, you're gonna feel like a whole new person. Like literally so detoxed <laughs> that you're just gonna question your life existence. Like what just happened? <laughs> but it feels so good though because you're just like fresh. Feels like a new person when you go through the dragon fruit number two. <laughs> All right, guys, the, the basket here is starting to get filled up and we're down to our last one, two, three, four, five fruits. And they're just tiny ones. And then after this, we'll go harvest the Desert Kings. And as I'm eating them, I'll answer some questions with you guys. So if you have some questions, save them until I sit down and I can see them because right now I cannot see your questions. I think this is my favorite part of growing dragon fruit is harvesting them because it's just so pretty. It looks like ornaments on a Christmas tree 
And it's just so aesthetically pleasing to look at that sometimes it makes me sad to take them off because they just look so nice. It just, and when people that aren't familiar with dragon fruit come over and see my house and they see the dragon fruits and they see all these fruits on it, they just can't believe that a cactus like this produces a fruit that's so, so pretty and so delicious. They think it's just uh, cactuses, you know, until they try the fruit, they're like, no way. That cactus grew this fruit? <laughs> so that's always awesome to see people that surprise. Okay, we're almost done. Got two more. So far, I've only got poked once, so that's pretty good. I used to come inside my house with so many thorns, and my wife just looks at me and like, what are you doing out there? <laughs> so I gotta be more careful so my wife doesn't yell at me this time. Because I do have kids now, so you gotta be careful. These thorns get stuck in your fingers or hands, and when you accidentally pick up your child, they can get them, and they're so small that you can't see them. So be careful around kids once you harvest dragon fruit. Make sure they're all out of your hands before you guys come and play with them. And our last one here, it is super tiny. Perfect size for my daughter. She would love this. No fruits go to waste here. And this is our last Pelora on this trellis. I have more Pelora. I have two more trellis of Peloras over there. But we're just going to leave those because I have so many here. I'm not going to even finish them all. All right, guys. I'm going to take you guys now to the Desert King. Yeah, the Aputuno up, up thorns. <laughs> yeah, those hurt. Okay, I'll put the camera right here. But you guys can see there's two or three Desert Kings right behind that trellis. So let me go over there and harvest them. All right. So there's three Desert Kings. And these guys got thorns too. So we're gonna be very careful here. Let me just harvest these three and then I'll come right back to you guys. First Desert King cut. And two of these Desert Kings here, I pollinate, I cross pollinated them with Laverne Red. So I'm hoping to create a hybrid of Desert King that's just a little bit bigger. And Laverne Red is a very big fruit. So I'm wondering if this is gonna help this variety get bigger by using Laverne Red as the father and Desert King as the mother. So these two here have Laverne Red pollen, and that was it. Those were the only two Desert Kings. There you guys go. Here's the Desert King. All right, let's go back to our station, which is over there. And then we'll start eating some dragon fruits. All right, guys. So that was fun. So these two are cross pollinated with Laverne Red. So I'm just going to put X, L, V, R to know that these seeds are cross pollinated with Laverne Red. I'll eat some of this, save the other half, and then uh, germinate these seeds and then create a new hybrid with them. All right, got my table, my cutting board. We're ready to cut some dragon fruits and eat them. Oh, look at all of these fruits. So awesome. It's been so long since I've had my last dragon fruits, so I'm so excited to finally get to eat them right now. <laughs> I always forget what they taste like, and then once I try them again, I'm like, that's what they taste like, and that's why I love them so much. Just gonna clean more of these spikes because I don't want to accidentally grab them. This is a really big Desert King, so I'll eat this one. This one looks really nice.
And let me just pick the biggest Pelora and eat that one as well. And after an hour later, I'll be in the restroom. <laughs> All right, so these are the two that I've chosen. This is Ecuador Pelora, self-fertile, self-pollinating. It takes about 90 to 120 days for it to ripe. It's white flesh, honey flavor, very, very sweet. Love this one. Desert King here, this is a self-sterile variety, meaning you have to cross-pollinate it with another variety of pollen. So using sugar, sugar dragon, using purple haze, anything besides its own pollen, it will fruit. And um, so very, the flavor is very sweet as well, like candy almost. Everyone that eats it explains it like sweet as candy. Uh, it's red, magenta flesh, seeds are a little bigger, and they're both in the Megathanthus family, so that's why they look so similar, just very different color. <laughs> All right, let's answer some questions and we'll cut into some dragon fruit as well. All right. Okay, let's answer some questions, guys. If you have them, I'll answer them now. Uh, Antonio, what's up, Antonio? Didn't see that you're in here. James Burnett, what's up, James? All right, same with all the Megalanthus hybrids you graph. Yeah, all the Megalanthus uh, varieties I like to graph is because in, in my area, they just don't grow so well with their own rootstocks. So I always graft it onto Vietnam White or Sugar Dragon, and that, that makes them grow like crazy. Like all these Pelores back here, are grafted with sugar dragon uh, rootstocks. And that's, that's probably why they're so prolific with fruity. D, isn't DK self-fertile? Uh, Desert King for me, when I tried its own pollen, I didn't get it to fruit. But if you guys notice, Desert King always has very little pollen. So maybe it's because I don't have enough pollen or it's truly self-sterile. I try every year, but because I love these fruits and they take so long to ripen, they're so small. I try to get all of the fruits to, you know, uh, be successful by cross-pollinating them. Lynn Houston, love what you do, not sure what type of marker was used, ink is not healthy. Uh, I use a permanent marker um, and it's okay because the skin of the dragon fruit is so thick that it won't affect the fruit at all. You're not eating the skin, you're eating the flesh. You're gonna peel it and throw it, throw it away anyway, so. Not too worried about that. A lot of people in the dragon fruit world use permanent sharpie on our fruits. Um, it's not like an apple where you eat, can eat the skin. Like we throw the skin away for dragon fruits. Um, Rhea Charles, question, why do ants like to be on the new growth of dragon fruit and is it harmful? Ants like to be on the new growth of dragon fruit because when new growth is growing, they produce little dew and nectar on the tip of them. And they go there and they just take those nectar and they're just eating the sugars that's coming out of them. Um, it's no, there's no harm in them coming and do that. Um, if you notice that they start to eat at the actual new growth, then I would be worried. But most of the time, they don't do any damage. They're just taking the nectar and dew from the new sprouts. Wow, that's something I knew. Um, Mount Twin Cities waters. Low pollen probably due to partially incomplete tetraploid from Megalanthus ancestor. Yeah, I've noticed that with the Megalanthus. They just are so hard to cross-pollinate to other varieties. They always fail. It's a very interesting variety. Okay guys, let's go ahead and cut into some fruits. Which one should I eat first? Should I do the Pelora or should I do the Z Desert King? Uh, let me know guys. Let me know in the comments which I will eat first. I will select once I see uh, what you guys choose. Uh, where do I go to buy cuttings from you? Um, I have a website, www.graphingdragonfruits, fruits with an S.com. Um, subscribe, we will be releasing some cuttings very soon. DK, DK, DK. All right, the first three comments says DK. So let's go ahead and do Desert King. All right, you guys, let me just clean this cutting board here and uh, let's cut into this. Here we go, Desert King. Let's cut it. All right, you guys ready? Whoo! That is a gorgeous dragon fruit. Let me get closer so you guys can see the, the flesh. All right. Here is Desert King, you guys. Just look at how pretty that is. And even though it's sat through winter, 
the flesh still is very firm. It doesn't feel like it's overripe. And even the texture from the looks of it looks very like still intact and good. So yeah, Desert King does so well in the wintertime. Even look at the skin, it's just no cactus rust spotting, just pretty, pretty fruit. All right, guys, that's just, that's gorgeous. Pretty, and look at those seeds, they're so big. Uh, I won't need any seeds from this one, but I'll save the other two that I have over there. Okay, let me hop back and uh, <laughs> let's enjoy this Desert King. All right, just gonna cut this into quarters. I like, I like, I kind of like to do orange slices and there goes my napkin. Here we go. All right guys, here's the slice of Desert King that I'm gonna be eating. And uh, let's go ahead and have a taste and I'll explain everything to the best I can and have you guys try to experience it through the camera with me. You guys ready? Cheers. Wow. Wow. I was thirsty. I didn't bring out any water. And I've been talking to you guys for about 30 minutes now, so my mouth was getting really dry. One bite of this Desert King replenished all of that uh, water. And oh gosh, it's so juicy, so sweet. The flavor is so clean and crisp. It doesn't have... Um, that watered down flavor from sitting over the winter or being rained on so much. It's actually a really nice clean dry fruit flavor. So cool, so cool, so cool. Let me take another bite. Oh yeah. I think I did let it over ripe though because I don't taste any tart in there. It's very sweet, no tart, and kind of, cre not creamy. I would say it's more it's just sweet, no tart in it, really candy-like. Mm. Wow. That is amazing, that is amazing. So like I said, if you guys want a dragon fruit that does well over the winter and have them ready right in around this time, which is April, Desert King. That was so delicious. I'm gonna save this one, so I can do a side-by-side -side of the Palora and the Desert King to see which one was sweeter. Okay, let's go ahead and cut into the Ecuador Palora Yellow Dragon Fruit. Here we go. And bam. <laughs> this looking really good too. Let me get closer so you guys can see. All right. Here's the Pelora. Also did very well through the winter. You can see the skin is very thick, so it protects the flesh. It's not translucent or jelly-like, so the flesh is still really good. All right, let's go ahead and eat this. Here's the Pelora. Let's see which one's sweeter. Wow, no questions like even needs to be asked. That was a no brainer. The Pelora is just so sweet. It was just right when you bite into it, you don't even have to chew it. The sugar kind of just lathers into your tongue and you just have a nice euphoric feeling from all that sugar. <laughs> wow, As the texture is firm. Mm. Wow, 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 so sweet. This is crazy how sweet it is. I should have brought my Brix refractor meter, but it would have taken too long. So I'll just eat it and tell you guys the best. This to me, easily 19, 20 Brix. The, the Desert King, probably in the 18, 19 as well. They're still both pretty high, but which one is sweeter? It's the Pelora, but which one has more flavor and complexity? Desert King. If I were to choose from the both, which one would I eat um, from the two? I would choose Desert King. It's just sweet, has a lot of complexity of dragon fruit flavor. It's clean, firm texture, just like a very exotic 
dragon fruit that you probably won't find in stores ever that you won't find in stores ever and tastes so good after eating that palora and going back to the desert king it doesn't taste that sweet anymore because that one's just so powerful it made it not as sweet but then again it has all of those nice exotic great complexity dragon fruit flavor so still really good delicious okay guys i'll answer a few more questions and then we'll probably conclude this live so if you guys have any more let me know other than that i'm gonna eat this last palora clean up and then uh, get inside before it gets too dark all right let's see here still got a couple people in here thanks for hanging out with me guys Impressive it did so well, especially this winter. Yeah, I'm just as surprised as you are. Can't believe these dragon fruits did so well during the winter. Definitely keepers here in my area. What's the name of the yellow one? Ecuador Palora. For me, the Palora tastes just like super sweet Spanish lime. I've never uh, had a Spanish lime, super sweet Spanish lime before. Gotta try that one day. Do you have any new trailers for the season? So this season is gonna be a little different. I was so caught up in chasing varieties and collecting all of these varieties because they just keep coming out. I'm actually reverting back to work on a project where I'm gonna use the Vietnam white to create a self-fertile dragon fruit that's self-pollinating, that has a colored flower and colored flesh. So that's why I'm going back using the Vietnam white as the mother to try to uh, get the self-fertility line genes to pass on to its offspring. So that is the new one. I'm starting basically all over. I felt like I was just chasing all of these dragon fruits that keep coming popping up and everyone's hyping it up. So I'm just gonna ignore all that and just do my own thing for this year. So you won't see too much of new stuff for me, more of what I'm working on for the next couple of seasons. All right. Will you have dragon fruit for sale on your website soon? Yeah, I'm gonna be actually cutting a lot of these uh, extra growth. I've been letting them grow through the winter. So probably at the end of April, you guys will start seeing stocks. So early May. Um, too many new varieties coming out now. Yep, that's why I said too many new varieties out there. Just focus on what you have and improve from there. Tyler Hall, love the video. Got some cuttings from you last year and they are doing great. How long will you think before they produce fruit? So if you got my cuttings last year, they, uh, they technically can fruit this year if you already rooted them, put them in a trellis and have them grow to the top of the, the canopy and tip them. Um, if you already did all that, you should have fruits this season. But if not, you got to let it grow to the very top until it has a canopy, then you'll get some fruits. I heard Edgar say that in one of the group taste tests y'all did. Yes, Edgar always tells us that. Go back and uh, redo everything he did uh, by using Vietnam White and just taking the Asunta line, all those great genes, just throw them into a Vietnam White and see what happens. So that's what I'm going to do this year, guys. It's going to be cool. And of course, I record through the whole, all the progress so you guys can follow along. Uh, how do you know the genus of the different dragon fruits? Example, Megalanthus. Um, after you grow dragon fruit for so long, these terminology is used within the dragon fruit community. So eventually after you see them so much, you kind of just know um, what you're looking at and the, the genus name of it. Um, that's how I learn at least. And then I just go on Google, of course, to see, and then you start recognizing the branches, the characteristics of what makes it a megalanthus, quantum molensis, stuff like that. All right, what fertilizer are you using this year? So I'm still using Dr. Earth, um, Flower Girl, but uh, Flower Girl Bud and Bloom um, for the flowering phase. And then during like early spring, I'll use the Dr. Earth Grow, uh, the all-purpose uh, fertilizer. So they're just granular that I throw in. I mix it with my soil. Um, I do about one to two cups per container and I do that every month. And that's making them very happy. Okay, I'm gonna take this last bite of this Palora, answer a couple more questions, and then we're gonna wrap it up, guys. Mm. That Palora is just so sweet. If I were to harvest the Desert King a little earlier, I think I would have preferred that one more, but 
because it doesn't have as much sugar as the Pelora. This one's kind of outshining it right now, but like I said, the complexity of the flavor in this makes up for it. Okay, guys. So I guess those are all the questions that we have. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys, and harvesting these dragon fruits. Hopefully you guys learned something and dragon fruit season is starting to begin for you guys. Um, I'm gonna be making some more videos to upload to help you guys prepare for when the season starts. So keep an eye out and uh, thanks for following along. So, all right, I'll see you guys soon. If you guys have any other questions, leave in the comments. I'll go back to them to answer. And if you guys haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so that way you guys won't miss a single thing. Have a wonderful day now. Bye, guys.